This will be the last topic for Unit 2. Topic 7, Ecological Succession. So disturbances to a balanced ecosystem can come in many forms and scales. They're a natural part of ecosystem development and in some cases necessary to maintain the health of the ecosystem. Higher levels of biodiversity help mitigate the impact of these disturbances. The more biodiversity that's present, the easier it is for that area to respond. Open niches will always be filled. So basically, ecological succession is the process by which an ecosystem recovers from a disturbance. In general, ecosystems with high biodiversity have an easier time recovering. Ecosystems in the desert or the tundra biomes tend to take significantly longer to recover from these disturbances. Succession can come in two types, primary and secondary. And this is a this is an important part for the AP environmental science test. The type of disturbance dictates which an ecosystem experiences. So let's look at primary succession first. And the most important thing is in red. It starts with bare rock. There is no soil present. It can take hundreds thousands of years. This is because soil needs to be built up first and soil takes a long time to develop. Example locations, new lava field, glacier field, abandoned road. There's much more secondary succession on our planet than primary succession, but the significance of no soil being present is important to emphasize. In primary succession, the general progression is you need lichens and mosses. They're the first to colonize the area. As they die and decompose, small amounts of soil are created, allowing for more complex plants to grow. The roots of these plants break up more of the rock. This process of growth, decay, and regrowth continues until the soil depth increases. And then eventually shrubs and small trees can grow, followed by larger, fast-growing trees like pines. And then finally, a climax community forms made up of large hardwood species like oak and hickory. A pioneer species is one that first moves into this new habitat. These tend to be poor competitors. In some instances, the pioneer species may adapt to the new conditions, creating a new species. Let's take a look at these stages of primary succession. So we have that exposed rock all the way to the left and we're seeing time as we go across. The next thing in will be lichens and mosses. And then we'll start with small weeds. Then we'll have perennial weeds and grasses and then small shrubs. And then certain trees have an easier time adapting to both less soil and more light. So aspen, cherry, and young pine, and they grow quickly. And then we get into more hardwood trees like beech and maple and broadleaf forest trees. Secondary succession, the difference is that you start with soil. So you can skip that first step of the lichen and mosses. The soil is already present. It can take under 100 years to complete because building that soil is what takes such a long time. Process can start with grasses and shrubs and then move on to the climax community. So it follows the same sequence, just quicker. And example locations. So after a forest fire or flood or abandoned human structures. Things to keep in mind. There'll be a significant loss in biodiversity right after the disturbance and may remain low for some time. This in turn leads to a decrease in total biomass. So how much green stuff is there? Species richness. So how many different types of species are there? And net primary productivity. How much energy are we harnessing from the sun? As succession progresses, these will begin to increase again until they are at the same level or higher than it was before the event. Indicator species. Some ecological disturbances are not obvious right away. Eco ecologists will monitor what's called indicator species populations to determine if a change is occurring and how quickly it's occurring. Indicator species tend to be species that are particularly sensitive to changes in their habitat. So you see the picture of the canary in a coal mine. They would send birds down into the coal mine to see if the air was able to be breathed. So if the canary, if they brought the canary back up and it didn't live, they knew not to send people down there. Amphibians are good indicator species because they have to live both on land and in water. And they're very much in both of those environments. So if things start to go wrong with the amphibians, it's usually the first thing that we notice and can be aware of in terms of there being some sort of ecological disturbance. So to recap, ecological succession refers to how a habitat recovers from a disturbance. Succession can be classified as a primary or secondary, and the type of disturbance will dictate what type of succession. Remember, primary succession always occurs on where there's no soil and starts with lichens. And secondary succession, there's soil already present. 
In general, areas of high biodiversity will recover quicker. Factors such as biomass and primary productivity will decrease after a disturbance and then slowly build back. Indicator species can provide early indication of environmental changes.